Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're just going to do another review of Velocity Banking. And I had uh, a Meta AI, which is kind of like uh, my new favorite AI art app because all the other ones I think cost money and this one is free to draw me a picture of Rocket to Money. <laughs> and uh, I hopefully will be able to use something called Velocity Banking to launch ourselves to financial success. So what is Velocity Banking? All it is is a debt payoff strategy using a line of credit as our main operating account. So there's only two steps to this. Number one is a budget. And then number two is to have a line of credit as our main operating account. As you can see right here, I have a budget. This could be a two-person household income, $5,000 a month, $4,100 expenses. We got about $800 in leftover savings per month. And I don't know if you knew this, but a lot of people paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, if you're making $5,000 a month and you got less than 1000 left over, you're kind of feeling it. And I remember hearing statistics as far as 10 years ago that the average person did not even have $400 in savings. I remember living that life. It was very scary, right? So what we're going to do is remember this is a debt payoff strategy. If you need, if you have $5,000 of income and $5,000 of expenses but absolutely no debt, we have what Dave Ramsey would call an income problem, right? And as you make more income, you have really have two problems to deal with, taxes and and uh, debt, right? Because, you know, when it comes to debt, banks don't lend money to people who need it, right? So if you don't have the income, you ain't going to get you ain't going to be able to borrow money for a mortgage, house, um, the only exception is student loans because you know you can't declare bankruptcy on those. And the, I think the federal government's um, asset pool, forty percent of it is student loans. So uh, might want to makes you think why they don't allow you to declare bankruptcy for those loans, right? <laughs> so here uh, again, it's a debt payoff strategy, and what we're going to do is increase our cash flow as we pay off our debt. Another thing I want to mention is that you know a lot of times we've got to do these things before we start taking on debt. It's kind of like similar to tax planning. You probably want to learn how to save on – again, I'm not uh, an accountant, right? But you probably want to learn how to save taxes or tax strategies um, before you, you owe money to the government or the IRS, right? Not an accountant. not giving advice, but I'm just saying if you probably talk to an accountant – they're probably going to tell you, yeah, you should do that, right? Just like with debt payoff strategies, you want to learn about these debt payoff strategies before you actually take on debt. And what happens with, um, unfortunately, with a lot of people today is they always want to learn how to how to drive a car after they've crashed it, right? Financially speaking, okay? And so let's just assume that we have uh, these debts, right? So whenever we do expense breakdown, we list every single debt that we have, two credit cards, a car loan, a mortgage, and other food, gas, insurance. And um, let's also assume that we have a something called a personal line of credit. So what is a line of credit? All is a financial tool where you can borrow money, pay back, use it over and over again. It's a very powerful tool. So you know when I borrow, let's say, $100 from my, or $1,000 from a line of credit, and then fifty dollars is due, like fifty dollars is due. I could just borrow a thousand and fifty, or I'm sorry, fifty dollars from a line of credit, and then put it back, and I might have to pay like four cents in interest, right? Isn't that crazy? Oh my goodness, that's so crazy. I had no idea that was even possible, but that's that's what we can do with a, a personal line of credit. A home equity line of credit is exactly like a personal line of credit, except that you're putting your home equity as collateral. So you might get bigger rates. So instead of fifteen thousand, you might get fifty thousand. And your interest rate could be like 8.5%, right? So, oh, it rounded to nine. Well, well that's stupid, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so let's just go ahead and do 15,000. And, you know, if you round a few cents, it's not going to make the biggest difference, right? And now we're going to, what we're going to do is write our budget, right? So we're uh, assume the same exact income, zero savings, and then, um, basically copy our expenses and then instead of right instead of having any savings because velocity banking is just dumping all your income and not having any savings with the help of a line of credit the line of credit helps you maintain control of your finances whereas directly dumping your money into loans and non um uh, two way, what we call two-way products. So a line of credit is a two-way product, meaning you could put money into it and then take money out whenever you want. When we dump money into loans, that that money is kind of gone for a long time, until 
until we pay off the entire loan, right? And we give it back in cash flow. So let's go ahead and do this. So C2 minus C3, that's just income minus expenses. So instead of savings, we're going to have a concept called cash flow, which is very similar to savings. But remember, at the end of every month, when you do velocity banking, we're not going to have any savings at all. Except my banker told me to leave a penny in there because if you have zero in your bank account, that they might put it in that status where it's like before they terminate it. I forget what it's called, but it's like, yeah, they're, they'll probably lock your account and then and then you won't have access to your money. So she said, leave a penny in there. Just leave a penny in there. But I'm just going to say for the sake of this um, video, we're not going to have any savings, okay? Now, what we're going to do is increase this cash flow number. We're going to increase it without on day one. With a personal line of credit, uh, with the help of personal line of credit. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, right? Some of you, I see this comment all, um, in the comments all the time was, well, who has a personal line of credit lying around, right? And the answer is, is I do, right? I got a $15,000 line of credit available laying around at July 5th, 2024. I don't even have owe any money on it around 15% interest rate. And the secret to getting credit, and I, I have to emphasize this because people understand this, is that you get it when you don't need it, right? Banks don't lend money to people who need it, right? And so if we're not understanding how to manage our finances well from the beginning and we crash, we don't want to learn how to drive the car then after we crash. But so many people do that. It's like, well, now I need a line of credit. I was like, no, the bank's not going to lend to you unless you get really lucky. Right, unless you get really lucky, but you always want to start off with a good financial foundation. So let's just assume that we have a fifteen thousand dollar line of credit available. And again, how did I get it? I got it because I didn't need it, right? And I have over two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars in line of credit. I can't even keep track of it anymore. All right, so now let's go ahead and do this. Let's move these credit cards into that line of credit, and and it's not a coincidence for the purposes of this demonstration. It's exactly 15 grand, right? <laughs> so we have 15 grand in the balance of our credit cards, and let's go ahead and move it exactly here, 15,000. So what happens to the, these two credit cards? Well, the payments go away, zero, zero. And now we went from $861 in savings every month, even though we have stuff to pay off debt, so basically our, our money is being siphoned by debt because of the interest that accrues, versus we pay, use all of our income to pay off debt. So again, we haven't paid off the debt yet. We just simply transferred it here. But the difference is that we're going to make our line of credit as our main operating account. See, the average American, the, the bank wants you to make your checking account as your main operating account. Checking account. Here, our line of credit is our main operating account. So we're going to do two things. So we're going to put this entire 5000 right? The actual. So here's the actual velocity banking strategy. Your entire income, income, oh man, I can't even spell. Income goes into line of credit and then expenses out of line of credit, right? And, and there's a few things that you have to consider when doing this. You have to consider the debt payoff order, right? Like you, you always want to pay credit cards first because they give you immediate cash flow relief. You want to take care of the high interest rates, the high payments, right? Credit cards are notorious for that. And then take on the amortized loans. So let's go ahead and do this and put our entire paycheck, entire 5000 into that line of credit. So now it becomes 10000 And then as you're, you know, taking out money for your expenses, this is eventually going to go up 13646.53. And so after about every single month, our cash flow is going to uh, uh, put the balance of the line of credit down about $1,300, right? So basically, it, the way that we calculate this is I2 plus 1. I'm sorry, I2 plus 1. And then next month's balance is the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest minus this cash flow number, 1353.47, okay? And now what you do is you calculate the interest, you take the interest here, I'm sorry, the average daily balance, which is how you calculate the interest, multiply it by 10%. 10% is the interest, and then you divide by 12, right? And so now, um, all you got to do is just copy and paste, copy and paste, and then we should get some numbers here as to what the uh, debt payoff would be or how long it'll take to pay off that, off that debt. So about 12 months, about 12 months. Maybe I could reformat this a little bit better so it's not just only showing me two digits if I can. And if I can't, then I don't always want to waste too much time. Ooh, let's do accounting. No, we're going to do, how do we format this? Currency, right? Currency. And look at this. It's giving you a dollar, uh, I'm sorry, a pound sign. I don't want that. 
I want English, United States. There we are, to up to two decimal places. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now we got that covered. And then, um, yeah, so it took us about 12 months to pay this thing off. And now we got to figure out, okay, well, do we tackle on the car loan or the mortgage first, right? Because you might say 6% mortgage, I, that's a higher interest rate. And I want to definitely take care of that. Now, there's different ways to think about it, right? So I would say, you know, maybe pay off the $24,000 first because it frees up more cash flow and it's easier to pay off even though it's a lower interest rate. So um, there is something, there's a concept called the cash flow index. All it is is the the balance of the loan divided by the monthly payment. So if it's $24,000 divided by the monthly payment, 447.43, then it's going to spit out a number, right? So let's do 200,000 divided by 1199.1. It's going to spit out a number. And basically, the lower the number, the the it, it's basically saying you should pay it off first, right? So the way that you think about this is, would I rather pay $24,000 to get $400, let us say $50 back, or $200,000 to get $1,200 back? You get more bang for your buck by paying this one off fast, even though it's a lower interest rate. And then you can use um, the 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 uh, new cash flow that you get from paying this off, right? Into for your for your what's it called? Uh, <laughs> I can't even think right now. For your uh, for your mortgage. Now let's uh, go to a loan amortization calculator. Okay, loan amortization calculator, and just kind of plug in some of our numbers here to figure out. You know, after we paid off, and what's the milestone? 12 months. Our, after we paid off our credit card debts in 12 months, right? So 12 months and then 15K, we paid it off, right? How long is it going to take us to pay off this car loan? And what's the current balance of this car loan? That's something we have to think about too, right? So current balance of this car loan. So 24,000, 24,000 at five years at 4.5% because a car loan usually is five years, right? So 4.5%, does it, yeah, it spits out this number and then after, well, basically it's about a year, the balance is about 19 grand, right? 19 grand. And take a look at this, you don't really, you know, you pay a couple, about three grand in interest, but spread out over five years. So it's not that bad compared to a 30 year mortgage. <laughs> So uh, let's go ahead and do 19 grand. Now, here's the thing, right? So we have, okay, 19 grand in debt, and we only have a $15,000 uh, credit line. So one thing we have to consider is that usually it's not a good idea with a lower interest rate loan to put the entire thing in a line of credit. Now, it also depends on the amount, too. I always talk about this in other videos about how if you have a mortgage, you don't want to, and it's like 2%, you don't want to replace with a 9% line of credit. In certain instances, it's okay uh, to do it, in my opinion, but you always pay end up paying a little bit more. So how can we um, basically pay off our debt without losing control of our money, right? Because that's, that's the fear of putting overpaying this money with our into our loans because we can definitely do it it's relatively easy okay make an extra payment either to the loan or the mortgage but the problem is is that once you dump that money in it's gone and this is why people are afraid to overpay their loans and if you take a look at statistics um you know if people you know people use the default option of overpaying their loan with their savings they they'd all be debt free by seven years about but why don't they pay off their debt because they're afraid of losing that control. And so how can we overpay this while still maintaining control? We do something just called chunking, just moving pieces of that loan into that line of credit. And usually you could just do a, a small amount, kind of like 5,000 uh, or 10,000. I always say do it uh, to amount similar to um, to your more, to your income, your monthly income, right? So if you just move $5,000, then it's going to be 14 grand. And then you still keep making the monthly payment, so this doesn't pay off until the cash flow is uh, completely gone. But it's going to prevent something called, which is really important, segregation of income. So when you have one place where you dump all your money and not lose control, that's where the that's where the the, the sweet spot is, right? Because that's why most people never overpay their loans because they need a savings account. And if you go to any Reddit post about a home equity line of credit. You'll see that a person who's always saying that they're struggling with the home equity line of credit has 
uh, what's it called? A savings account. I'm being distracted because my tablet's going off, probably because I'm getting comments on this YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and um, do this, and let's just put this in our what we call a velocity banking calculator of what would happen when we put this in, uh, entire thing. Well, not this entire thing. Uh, pieces of this thing into a line of credits, 24,000. And then we're going to go in here and then put 19 grand. That's the current balance right there. Uh, interest rate is 4.5, five years. And what's the payment amount? It is 447.43. Yes, 447.43. And then 15% line of credit. And then what is our monthly income? Our monthly income is about 5,000, right? 5,000. And our living expenses is everything except for the loan we're trying to pay off, right? So everything except for the loan we're trying to pay off, and that would be these two right here. So our general expenses plus our general expenses plus our um, our mortgage. Okay, so that's two one nine nine point one. So two one nine nine point one. Let's go ahead and add that in right here. Two one nine nine point one, and then here the chunk amount is just how much are you going to move to the line of credit. Um, I found that in most cases, it really makes a minor difference about how much you move to the line of credit. Just don't move the whole loan, right? Like, so I could just do 5,000, okay? And you could see that you originally you're gonna pay about 1855 in interest uh, at the $19,000 mark. Um, but let's see what happens when we do 10,000. You're gonna pay more obviously because you're, again, you're holding that money into a higher interest line of credit. So it depends on you whether it's worth it or not, because some people want to, they just want, they just want a little bit of peace of mind that, that their money, well, they can immediately free up cash flow, even though they pay up a little bit more interest, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's do 10,000 and let's see what happens to the, the payoff and the amount that we pay. This will probably go up a little bit. Oh, so almost a hundred dollars. Right. So that's why I say you don't have to do like all the whole thing. And even if you did do the whole thing. All right. Let's take a look here. We pay double. Right. That's that's why I always say just do the chunking method if you're going to uh, overpay the loan. But look how fast it pays off. Point six years and four hundred seventy nine dollars. OK. So now what what is point six years? So twelve plus point six divided by twelve. That's 12, eh, I'll just say 13 months. Wait, hold on. Point 0.6. Wait, point 0.6 years. How much is that? Point, point 0.6 times 12 plus 12. That's it. All right, so now hopefully I could do my math formulas right. So that's that's 19.2 months, right? 19, that sounds right. Uh, yeah, 19.2 months. Okay, so 19, we'll say 20 months, be a little bit conservative. And then we're going to pay off 15 plus 24 is 39K of debt. Okay, so then once we've done that, this goes to zero. And then what's our new cash flow? 1800. And then we do the same thing with the mortgage. See how easy that was? And then we got to figure out at 20 months what the balance of the mortgage is 200,000. About 30 years at 6%, and this is 20 months. 195. So 195K. All right. <laughs> so now what we do is just plug in the velocity banking calculator and just kind of a quick plug. You might be wondering where did I get this calculator from? Well, I originally learned this from. Uh, Renatus right here. So you see Renatus Velocity Banking. And so basically they're an online educational company. And I, I'm going to show you who created this calculator. His name is Randall. So Renatus Randall Velocity Banking. Right? Where's Randall? Right there we go. Velocity Banking with Randall. He's the author of this spreadsheet that just kind of calculates the debt payoff. And he was the one that one of the people that I learned from in 2017. Look, he's been looking, working at Renata since uh, 2011, kind of did his own thing and then managed to get 24 short term rentals in a two year period. So you can see that they just kind of go over here, everything. And I this is where I originally learned it from to 
bought Renaz in 2017. So full disclosure, I actually uh, get commission from selling their educational products. So if you're interested in Renatus, I'm probably going to open up the Google form soon because I know there's some interest out there. And if not, that's cool. Just keep watching the videos. You get free content. This is all I'm going to talk about here. And I, I'm not going to talk about specifics of how to get discounted houses, $100,000 discount, um, which I have done. And then, you know, I have a, I have a very um, simple strategy of getting one paid off house every about two years or so. And, you know, some people, uh, one person that I know, you know, he has a thousand units in multifamily. So we all have our different strategies, although uh, I am a, a little bit curious when it's like hmm, a thousand units and you worked at Chipotle uh, when you started learning about real estate. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm not gonna, I'll go into that in a later time. So, again, we just put in this uh, calculator here of all the, the, the deets, the information. Uh, so six percent. Right, so six percent is the interest rate. Thirty years, one one nine nine point one, and then let's just kind of do this right here and our expenses because it's everything except for the loan we're trying to pay off is only two thousand dollars. Now, here's one thing I really want to emphasize. Right, you might have heard um, that in on the internet, oh, just you know, lo loans always bad, lines of credit always good, and that's actually not true. Right. Um, if you have a 6% loan and you replace it with like a 15% line of credit, uh, the whole entire thing, you know, let's just assume that we replace it with the line of credit. Well, take a look at what happens here, right? So let's do 195, right? And you're actually, even though you pay it off in 11.7 years, you actually pay $12,000 more in interest. So, so you might as well just pay it off in 30 years because that's more time to pay it off. And you pay, you know, a little bit twelve thousand dollars less in interest so you don't always want to replace a mortgage to line of credit and again you know where i learned this from i learned it from randall i never re met the guy but i've talked to him online <laughs> i probably doesn't even know i do this channel but um 100 you replace the whole thing and then you get 12 grand um you pay more than 12 grand in fact if i were the bank i would probably encourage you to do this right so instead of waiting for my money for 30 years all this interest where it's like oh i, was, I thought i was gonna make two hundred eleven thousand dollars you're going to give me $12,000 more and, and do it in 11 years instead of 30? Yeah, do it. <laughs> as long as you get the line of credit with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would probably I would probably even encourage this. Now, obviously, you know, maybe there, you have to say it in a diplomatic way to tell them not to do it. But what I'm saying is that, you know, when you have a lower interest loan, you, usually you don't want to replace it with the higher interest rate line of credit. That, that doesn't make any sense. So what you're doing is you're just using your line of credit to overpay in little chunks to prevent something called segregation of income and pay it off quickly and have control over your money. Because when you can put your money into one place and still use it, like you think about when you put all of your over uh, leftover savings into a loan directly, that money ain't going to be there for you. You can't call the loan company and say, give it to me back. Because that's why they charge you lower interest rates because it's kind of like a software feature where you ever use Hulu or Netflix and they have like different tiers of pricing. Well, the cheapest one has the lowest amount of features. Same thing with loans. It's a one-way access where it's a line of credit. You get two-way access. That's why they they have the cost more in terms of the interest rate. But what we're trying to do is prevent, you know, that interest rate from mattering by maximizing our cash flow. And so if we use this chunk method, so if I do five thousand dollars, take a look here, six point seven years, and we're not paying two hundred something thousand grand in, you know, more than the interest over the thirty year period. That would like be mind blowingly stupid. But again, sometimes you hear that from the internet. All right, so now let's go ahead and just do this. So twenty months, so twenty plus six point seven divided by uh, well, let's do twenty divided by twelve plus six point seven. So that's eight point three years. 8.3 years, and then we're completely debt-free. So 239, 239K, woohoo! And so we're we're good. To our goal was to pay off their 239K, and we paid it off in about eight years. Oh my goodness, that that was so quick. Um, and I don't mean to brag, but I paid off my mortgage in in, in three years. So when I get the next house, it's going to be paid off. Well, I already have two houses technically, over five hundred thousand dollars equity. But once I, you know, the second house will just be paid off in about two and a half years. And then I'll be like almost, I'm already like about half of, of a half a millionaire. I think that that's, that's, I guess, 
what you would call it. But anyways, all right. So let me just go over this. Um, did I? Okay. Wait, actually, I, I already went over the cash flow index. Or did I? I don't know. I do this so many times. But let me just do a one more review just in case I did not do it. And I don't want to pause this video to see, did I do this or not? But one of the things that's really important is to also make sure, and I spelled this wrong, expenses. Oh, I don't even know how to spell anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> leave that for now. But one of the most important things is that we understand how to pay off debt in what order. Again, one of the way, easiest ways to figure out what order we can pay off debt is to use that cash flow index formula. So I think I went over it, but I want to go over it one more time again. So it's the statement balance divided by the monthly payment, and it's going to give us a number. So 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 divided by 325, and then this one is 24, 0, 0, 0 divided by 447.43, and then this one is uh, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 divided by 195823.04. So, oh, did I put an extra, extra, no, I, I did this wrong. It's the 1199.1. So as you can see here, think of this as like a de debt ranking order in which you should pay off the debt. So you always want to pay off the lowest one first. They free up cash flow immediately. Whereas if you focus on paying off the mortgage first, how long do you think it'll take to pay off that $200,000 just to get $1,200 back, right? Why not on day one, pay the 1500 so you get like $480, about $500 back on day one. So much easier to get the $500 back than it is to get the $1,200 back from paying the mortgage. So that's another thing that we have to consider. And I'm now curious how we spell expenses because this is bothering me. Expense, expenses, there we go. All right. So yeah, so that's the last thing we have to be aware of is that debt payoff order. Use the cash flow index. I remember that I didn't really find it useful until somebody sent me their spreadsheet and it had 15 debts. I was like, which one do I start with? And I was like, oh, I'll just use the cash flow index formula. It gave me an easy roadmap. Again, easy has a lot of value because if you look at most personal budgeting to date, it's so complicated that you'll be excited for one month and give up after a second, right? So you have to make it easy on yourself as well. When you say, hey, dump your entire paycheck into line of credit expenses out, that's so easy, right? Rather than budgeting or doing extra payments because whenever I make an extra payment into a loan, I have to know the exact amount that's going to go in there in order for my budget to work. Whereas if I just say, oh, you know, we'll just do a little chunk of 5000 and I dump my entire income into the line of credit, um, that's a lot easier because I don't. I just have to know on average how much I expect to pay off, right? On average, that's that's the beauty of it. All right. Well, that's it for today. It's so Velocity Banking. Another review. Hopefully, we can launch yourself to this money to financial success. And if you have any cool AI uh, generated pictures, you know, let me know because give me some ideas so I can just post more in the in the community feed. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and we will speak next time.